Hi, I'm back. This is Kathy. You found my space on the YouTube where I talk about sewing stuff, mostly garment sewing. And I started a YouTube channel. And um, I'm going to make this a Friday Sews. I've done that before, but this time I'm a little more official. I did reach out to Jen, who started it, and um, I'm now, I guess, more official because um, I am in the Facebook group now, I guess. Anyway, we'll see. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the Lamont Top by Itch to Stitch. And then after that, I'm going to discuss some travel hacks. It's getting to be that season. And then lastly, I am discussing an original um, idea on upcycling. Okay, so let's start with the uh, Lamont Top. I've got some notes here. The Lamont Top was brought out last week by Itch to Stitch. And I'll show you a line drawing here. I bought it right away and um, cut out the, you know, the pattern. And I made it with a fabric I had in my stash. It's a linen with a little bit of a pinstripe. And it's that off-white color, which is good for us with the warm palettes. And I have a warm palette, uh, my skin palette. And yeah, it, it sews up as easy as everyone says. Um, but I can bring a little bit more to the table as far as explaining things. I add an inch to the body. And um, I finished it and I thought, you know, next time I think I'm just going to scoop it out under my arms a little bit more. It just seems like it's pulling down, you know, no big deal. And then I had an epiphany like a day later. I had forgotten to lengthen under the arms. So the pieces are really odd shaped, okay? So I think what I'm going to do is just go get a piece because it's hard to explain. Just a second. Okay, so this is the front, and that's pretty straightforward, right? You've seen that before. Cut it on the fold. That I added an inch to. But what I forgot to add an inch to was this piece. Now, this piece combines the arm and the side seam. So what you're seeing here is the part that goes into the upper arm. And you gather between these two dots. Um, and then this part goes down to the side. And so where I'm touching here is actually a hem. So what I forgot to do the first time was add this inch here. So this was brought up a little bit. But um, so the first one doesn't have that. And then while I'm talking about the dots, um, two things. First of all, I found actually the dot goes here to here. And I found that that's a lot of fabric for the amount that it fits in which is fine. It's just that you're going to get a lot of gathering right on the top of your shoulder. It's actually quite flattering, but just so you know, like if that seems like a lot, it is. The other alteration I sometimes make without even knowing if I need to is I'll go ahead and put a forward shoulder adjustment in. And oh, and I did the full bust, by the way. Um, I'm right on the edge. You know, like I could probably do either one, but I'd rather have it like too big than like you can't wear it. So anyway, um, so I did a forward shoulder is what I was trying to say. So when you do a forward shoulder, you take some off the front and you add it to the back because your back is taking up more fabric. And I did that. Um, and then I found that the, that affected the gathering a little bit. So then I ended up moving the gathering a little bit forward also, okay? So let me just show you the inside. Okay, so this is the inside and I have been doing a lot of wovens lately and I am finding that having my serger set up with a three seam versus a four is kind of really nice. Like I'm gonna make sure I do that from now on. I know it's a small thing, but it just feels like it gives you more room when you go to sew the garment. And this uh, garment has half inch seam allowances all around, so that part's pretty easy. Um, it has the bias tape that you cut out for the neck and the sleeve 
and this looks really good because I hand sewed it, which I think I've told you before. I, I like, you know, hand sewing stuff. It, I find it nice and relaxing. I just go upstairs and sit on the back porch or watch TV or whatever, and I like it. Um, and then the bottom sleeve has a little bit of gathering also. Not as much as up on the top, but it has gathering too. Let's see, that's how much gathering I had to get together up at the top. And for my pear shape, I think it's really nice because it kind of makes me a little bit bigger like on the shoulders. So that was my hem. So the first one, I guess you could say I did a one and a quarter because I folded it over a quarter and then I sewed it up one inch. And that looks great. It's just fine. Okay, so then I wanted, that was my muslin, you know, my wearable muslin. And I only had to buy the pattern for that. So $11.20 is how much that garment cost because I had the fabric um, from a long time ago. It was a linen that I had a long time ago I really like. So the second one I went out and I bought some viscose crepe from Joanne in this peachy coral rose color that's going by a few different names these days, clay, putty, whatever. And this time, I did remember to move my dots forward, so the gathering, you can't tell on this, but the gathering's a little bit more in the appropriate place. And I hand sewed, again, this. Now, it did grow a little bit, so I guess if I had to do crepe again, I maybe I should treat crepe kind of like a knit. But anyway, it's a little bigger around the neck, but it's definitely wearable. Okay, so where I went off script a little <laughs> is that, you know, you put the shoulder seams together, then the next part is doing the neck, like it is on a lot of tops. Well, I just wasn't in the mood for hand sewing. And I thought, well, I can do stitch in the ditch. And so in other words, I had the bias tape right sides together, and then I flipped it around to the inside, right? And then you stitch on the top. Well, it looks kind of crappy, but it's good enough. And I didn't bother changing my serge thread. That's fine. So I finished it also with serged edge. Um, now I did change the hem a little bit because I have heard from Peggy Sagers that a deep hem kind of, um, it kind of says two things. One is that it's a nicer garment, better quality. And the other thing, it adds a little bit of weight. So I added, you know, a bigger hem. And then the last thing I wanted to say is that it does go with all my wide leg pants. Yes, wide leg pants. I'm gonna tell you about those sometime. Um, and I think it'll look good with the skirt. Hopefully by the time I publish this, I'll try it on with the skirt and take a picture. And this one, the only thing I have um, invested in is the fabric. And that was $16.70. And like I said in a previous video, going forward, I'm gonna call just the first garment, I'm gonna consider the cost of the pattern. And after that, I'm gonna consider it free. So um, there's no other notions whatsoever. So $16.70 is what that one cost. So overall, I'm really happy with it. Um, I think I'm gonna take a little pause from them, not because I don't like them, but I just think that maybe, um, I don't wanna have too many of them in my wardrobe. And that's kind of a hard decision because I've got a piece of fabric that I bought somewhat for that, um, and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it, but um, remains to be seen, we'll see. So overall, two thumbs up for the Lamont top by Itch to, Itch to Stitch. All right, so this time last year, I had travel on my mind. I have no travel plans right now. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But last year was a big travel year for us. And we had a big trip um, in September. So we were gone all of September and I was thinking a lot about traveling. Um, and the whole packing thing, I just found like is a really fun challenge. I can really relate to the words of the fictitious character Sheldon Cooper when he said, it's like Tetris with underwear when you get to pack. <laughs> I really like that sort of thing. So 
Anyway, I came up with an idea for a necklace, and that is I took a piece of minky fabric and I just simply folded it um, in half. So it's probably three inches wide, folded it in half, and then in this case, it's probably like 10 inches long. So I've got a tube, and then of course, minky doesn't ravel. So I did a little snip at the end there and I also let a little bit of opening so I could get the necklace in easier. So what I do while I'm traveling is I'll take the clasp and open it and then I'll put it so that the necklace is captured within this tube, something like this. And then that way, when you put it in your suitcase, it's not gonna get in a knot or and it'll keep the chain nice and safe. So that's kind of my sewing hack for that. And then another hack I had was that I used all silver while I was on the trip and I knew I would get tired of some of my um, necklaces. So what I did is I did the same thing with my silver chain and then at the end I put a safety pin and in the safety pin I put my pendants that I was going to wear. So they were all together and I could change the look. Like that. And then these earrings were super inexpensive and they were starting to see better days. So I just spray painted them white. And that way, if you know, you're at the beach or someplace or you just wanna get rid of them, you can, you have like no money invested in them. And the other good thing about this style of earring when you're traveling is you can sleep in them. They're super comfortable. And then you don't have to change every day. And you could even put like a little bead on the end of that too if you wanted. So I find that style of earring good for traveling. Now, if that doesn't resonate with you at all, um, there's one last thing. And this isn't sewing, but I just thought you might wanna see it. Take straws and put your chains in it. And I find the smoothie straws are especially good. And then again, your necklaces will not get tangled up you can find them easily. So that's my travel hack for today. I have more, <laughs> that's the one for today. <laughs> okay, so the last thing I'm gonna talk about today is an upcycling. So I went with a friend and she and I shop together when we get together. And I'm not much of a thrift shopper, but when we go out together, you know, if there's one there, we'll do it. We'll go into a thrift store and that's exactly what happens. So I was kind of thinking yardage when I saw this dress and it's up in my color zone pretty close and it's linen and I'm really embracing the crunchy linen vibe for this season. And then additionally, it had like a voile lining and so to find this color linen and then get the exact lining I think would be hard, hard to do. In addition, it has this little detailing, the little, um, I don't know what that's called exactly. Sometimes it's on sheets too, but anyway, that little detailing around the hem was really attractive and it had pockets. Well, like I said, I really was considering this yardage because the neckline is just not something that I wear. I mean, you know, your bra shows and it's just not a neckline that I wear. Well, as you know, we had this inclemently warm weather recently. And so one day I wanted to go out on my scooter and I wanted, I just threw on that skirt, that dress, because it was so hot out. And I thought, well, I'll just put a shirt under it and see how it worked. And I really liked it. So now plan B is not to change the garment in any way, but change what I have to go with it. So that's my hack is not to actually cut into the garment, but to actually change what you can maybe, how you style it or how you thought about styling it. So that's why I have this on. And what this is, is a knit top. It's um, just a thin off-white knit that has no lycra in it, cotton knit. And then I took this pattern. So my vision for what I was trying to do is kind of get like um, an old man's V-neck t-shirt that some girls, you know how like there's a look that's kind of like semi-distressed and some, you know, that kind of look. I was kind of going for a rendition of that look. So I, like I said, I bought this fabric and then this is for a woven, but I went ahead and did it up in a knit. And um, 
it's a tunic, so of course I'm not going to make it into a tunic. But this is how it looks so far. And like I said, I'm kind of going for this deconstructed look. So that's why there's seaming like here and there's some in the back. I haven't really totally worked out the sleeve yet. I wanted to roll it up, but as you can see, I had put some uh, stay stitching tape there and that shows. So I maybe have to put a tab there. It's a little bit of a work in project progress still. But so far I'm really happy with it. And that's just another project I've been working on this week. Well, again, it's just been great talking to you, and I just love sharing what I've been doing um, in my sewing room. And hopefully you found it interesting, and thanks again to Jen. So I will see you next Friday if I don't see you before that, because I've got a lot of stuff I'm doing. <laughs> see you later. Bye-bye.